There are different team distribution you can do in Tower Adversity. But let's first talk about how Tower Adversity works. It all starts with the zones. There are four of them, Stable Zone, Experiment Zone, Overdrive Zone, and Hazard Zone. Each zone have a number of towers, namely Resonant Tower, Echoing Tower, and Hazard Tower. And each tower has four floors, with first floor being the easiest and fourth floor being the hardest. The mechanics in Tower of Adversity revolves around this thing called Vigor. It is like the energy or stamina or how much likely your character is tired. 10 Vigor means that the character hasn't fought yet. 0 Vigor means he can't fight anymore. My man, he too tired my boy, you get the point. Another important mechanics is Tower buffs. Each tower has their buffs different from each other. Like for example in Hazard Zone, Resonant Tower has Electro Damage Bonus and on the Echoing Tower, Glacial Damage Bonus. Xiang Liao will benefit greatly on the Resonant Tower, and San Hua for the Echoing Tower. Planning your team to use these buffs can be the difference in getting all the crests on this challenge. As illustrated here, Stable Zone has one tower, and it has four floors. It is the easiest challenge in Tower Adversity, very much suited for early game. If we are to low at the first floor, it only needs one Vigor. All characters has 10 Vigor, so when you complete this floor, your character will now have a deduction of 1 Vigor. The next floor will cost 2 Vigor, and if you continue with the same team, you will be left with 7 Vigor. The third floor will cost 3 Vigor, and that will leave you 4 Vigor on the fourth floor, which is exactly the Vigor cost of the fourth floor. So that means, all 4 floors, which is also equivalent to 1 tower, can be all completed by a single team with each character having 10 Vigor down to 0 Vigor. And that means they cannot fight anymore. You can't use the same team again in another tower of the same zone, just like in Experiment Zone. It is not a problem here in Stable Zone because it has only one tower. Here comes the Experiment Zone. It has two towers, namely Resonant and Echoing Tower. This means that you have to use two teams here. But you don't have to build two fully built teams because again, the mechanics revolves around Vigor, and how you can use it strategically. You can use your weaker team on the easier floors, for example, my Sanwa team is weaker than my Jinshi team, so I can use Jinshi on both last floor, and it will cost me 4 Vigor each. Now Sanwa and her gang doesn't have to deal with the final floors on both towers. Sanwa using 2 Vigor on 2nd floor, 3 Vigor on 3rd floor, another 2 Vigor here, and another 3 Vigor here and that's 10 Vigor in total. Jinshi on the other hand has to play the easiest floor with 1 Vigor each, because she still has 2 more Vigor left. You can also swap teammates individually, like I can use Verena on Resonant Tower and Baiji on Echoing Tower then vice versa. It depends on you and the enemy. For example, I used my usual Jinshi's team on the first floor and Xiang Liao on the other first floor. Then I switched healers on the next floor. Then I switch DPS on the next floor and change healers again on the last floor. Everyone here ended up with zero vigor after completing both towers. All the floors can be done by different roster, so use it to your advantage if you ever encounter some specific damage resistant enemies. Plan your character selection each floor. You will come into a hard wall where brute forcing doesn't work. Every floor is resettable, so the vigor you use will be reset. Make use of the tower buffs, enemy weakness, and your ability to swap the teams and members for precision clearing the floors. Now here comes the overdrive zone. This is actually the hardest of them all. You have 3 towers with 2 floors each and 5 vigor each. There's not much freedom of team and character arrangement here, this is more like a brute force damage check challenge. With 5 vigor requirement per floor, I can just use my strongest team on the two last floors of the two towers, and I will be left with one more hard floor to deal with. So for this zone, you are required to have three strong teams. In my situation, I don't have a third strong team, so I left it unfinished, and we'll just come back to it again after I built my third team. I'm currently waiting for Camellia by the time this video is made. Same trick, we use the tower buffs to our advantage. That's why I'm waiting for Camellia because this tower has Havoc damage buff. And lastly, the Hazard Zone. 
This zone resets twice per month together with its reward, 700 asteroids at maximum achievement of 30 over 30 quests. It also has three towers. The one on the middle, the other tower, has only two floors but costs 5 vigor each. Applying everything previously, we should have our own teams ranked by damage potential. So here's my teams. My strongest team is Jinxi, followed by Shang Liao, then Sanwa. These two teams has enough damage output to probably finish the 4 vigor and 5 vigor floors. So here's what I did. I used Shang Liao on the first floor of Hazard Tower, then Jinxi on the second floor. They have now 5 vigor left in them. I can still use them on the final floors of Resonant and Echoing Towers. And so I did, costing them 4 vigor each. And they are now down to 1 vigor. There's no more choice for them but to clear the first floor for 1 vigor. This is a free floor for them. All that's left is my third team, which is quite still on the weaker side. So I used it to clear floors 2 and 3 on both Resonant and Echoing Towers. But I encountered a problem. This dude is 40% glacier resistance, and I'm not getting any buff from this tower. Jinxi and Shang Liao are both exhausted, and I have no more options but to try and try and brute force my way out through it. Unbuffed, resistant, yeah life happens sometimes boy, but I have to do it, there are no other way. I can actually feel that my damage is enough, it's just some enemy RNG is making this fight longer than it should have. And so finally, I completed it with full crests. And there you go, all about tower adversity in Wuthering Waves. GG will play Dopey.